Let's start with the first of these. The need to feel welcome. If there's any one thing about airport retail that is the most common characteristic is that it is, is often not very uh, welcoming. And one of the things that keeps it from being welcoming is this phenomenon called the force field effect. Now this has been studied extensively in trade shows. And it works like this. If there is a boundary between two different colors of carpet, maybe we have blue carpet or red carpet, we have, or in the airport you have white marble, you have black marble, or brown, there's a boundary there. That boundary, psychologically and unconsciously, creates a barrier, like a force field from Star Trek. And people won't cross it. You know, we've, seen, we've seen this in videos, you know, where a guy, you know, people standing you know, in the retail store on one side, people standing on the other side, just looking at each other, and they won't cross that boundary. Sometimes retailers compound this problem by putting physical barriers in the front of the store. Like here, we have this, this fixture shoved right up to the front edge of the boundary between the two colors of, scar of carpet. Does this look like a very inviting environment? On the other hand, if you break the plane of that force field, if you just have somebody stand there on the edge, it goes away. Even something as simple as moving a table or a fixture or a rack of merchandise out in front of the line creates a line, set of lines for the eyes that draws the customer in, makes them feel more welcome. Now, one of the things that I thought was kind of peculiar at KLIA is you have these bright red lines painted on the floor. Now, what does red mean? Right? Whoa! Now, I can understand you need to demarcate the boundary. That's where the gate comes down. That's where you, maybe they're not supposed to place fixtures out in the aisle like that. I understand you need to demarcate that boundary. But if I, this was my store, the first thing I would do is get a razor blade and get down. I would scrape up all that red paint and I would replace it with blue or green or yellow or any other color. We said, I shot this picture day before yesterday right here. Here's a, we'll get a few people inside the store and, and here's a customer. I watched her stand there for like three or four minutes. She was afraid to walk into the force field. It's not going to happen. Now, another thing that you can do to make your customers feel more welcome is to put everyone in uniform. So if I do have a question or I need some help, I can tell who works there. <laughs> right? <laughs> Big clue. If you walk in, everybody's all dressed differently. I don't know if you're a customer or you're, you know, right? So we saw a great example of this in the airside terminal where very clearly, very obviously, all of the ladies who work there are in these orange vests. It can be something simple. It can be an apron, or it can be, you know, it doesn't have to be a fancy, you don't have to, have to spend any money to do this. Just make sure that they're all dressed in a way that someone casually walking by on their way to their flight, or their gate, can see, oh, these people work there. And by the way, this young lady also gets bonus points for being out in front of the fixture. Right? In the aisle, that's where the customers are. And she had this big, beautiful smile on her face. God, I just love that picture. I just wanted to go over there and buy something. I don't know what, I have no idea what they're selling, but because <laughs> their, their point of sale uh, is a little bit weak there. But uh, it's very cool, very welcoming display. Um, and then greet people at the door. I mean, even if it's something as, as simple as you're behind the cash register and ringing up another customer and somebody walks in, you know, just give them a wave, you know. Yeah, and then go back to that rest of the, yeah, whatever. Better still, get out in front of the store. Again, here's another example. This is a confections um, store on the air side. Talk about a bear, they've got multiple force fields here. <laughs> But here they have a uniform sales clerk out in the aisle. They've also got a POP here uh, outside of the boundary. Very, very good job of breaking up the force field walls and greeting customers at the door. 
Now, I don't know about this guy. He doesn't really look like he needs any more chocolate. Uh, I know I certainly don't. And smile. Smile first. Turn to, turn to the left or right, just, or turn around to the table behind you. Smile at a neighbor. Do that now. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? They started giggling. Like you were tickling them or something. Just, just do that. Just, just, just smile. And I have to say that here in Malaysia, it's one of the things that, that I really just delights me to no end is how friendly everyone is and how there's always a, a smile, whether it's the bellman or the, 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 the wait staff in the restaurant or uh, the with people in the airport, everywhere I go, I see these wonderful Malaysian smiles. And then maintain eye contact with your customer as well. Turn to the left or right, make eye contact with your neighbor. Do that now. Okay, eyes front. Raise your hand if you could tell me what color that person's eyes were. Okay, brown would be a good guess, yeah. I remember where I am. But if you didn't notice what color their eyes were, then you didn't really make eye contact with them, did you? So if from anywhere in the store, you can be on your knees you know, doing inventory. When a customer comes in, if you just make eye contact with them and smile, it creates a, a psychological magnet that draws them into your store. They need to feel welcome. The second thing that they need is they need to feel comfortable. So. One of the easiest ways to, to make someone comfortable is to make them a friend. Offer them your name. Just turn to the left or right to, to someone you haven't met yet and just say your name. Not hello, my name is. Forget all the greeting part. Just your name. Orville Ray Wilson. Now do that with your neighbor now. Try that. This isn't rocket science. I'm not standing here trying to explain the Higgs boson, okay? This is pretty simple. Now, what, what did that person do in response to your name? Yeah, they smiled, they nodded, and they volunteered their name, didn't they? And so now you know the customer's name. So use their name throughout the course of the transaction. Well, it's a pleasure to meet you, Mr. Wilson. What can we help you find? Welcome to our store. Whatever the opening script is. And never, ever, ever, please beat this one out of your people. Never ask them, may I help you? Because the standard answer is, no, just looking. <laughs> Find them 50 ringgits if you catch them using this line. All right? This should be eliminated. Instead, we're going to substitute it with, when is your flight? Because we know they're going where? Somewhere. <laughs> we, don't, we don't know exactly where it is. But we know they're going, they're not coming. So when is your flight? Now I know how much time you have. Um, are you going to be uh, a window, you know, as opposed to somebody who's just window shopping? One in every 20 of your passengers going through your airport fall into the category of big spenders. And big spenders, this, this one in 20 passengers, account for about 35% of the total spend, in, uh, particularly in duty free. So you need to find out, you need to identify these people. And then ask, what can I help you find? Another 35% of your traffic is what are called target customers. They are looking for something specific. They need a battery for a camera, or they need uh, you know, a battery for a wristwatch, or they need, you know, they're looking for a particular kind of, 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 of a branded product of some sort. What can I help you find? And now, now you're on the, the journey towards selling them something, anything. And please provide comf comfortable seating if it's in a food and beverage environment or somewhere they're going to be sitting down, uh, maybe in a shoe retailer or a bookstore. Oh, heaven forbid that they sit down in your bookstore and actually read. Gosh, that would be terrible, wouldn't it? They might buy the book. Because one of the things we know about airports is that the guys who designed this chair we're from the Marquis de Sade and Associates Chair Company. These chairs are not designed for sitting. So you want people to come hang out in your restaurant, hang out in your bar, provide comfortable chairs. 
Also think about this. If children running around in your shop is an issue, then create a little corner somewhere with some Legos or some toys, with a, a little piece of carpet in the corner with some little trucks to put, some place where the kids can go and busy themselves while mom or dad is busy doing their shopping without being distracted, without being uncomfortable about what their kids are doing. And another point of discomfort for travelers right now, especially with all the security issues we have, is what do I do with my luggage, right? I'm dragging around this, this, you know, this rollerboard and, you know, and banging in and knocking things over, breaking glasses, and it's very uncomfortable. So if you can, if it makes sense in that particular operation, set aside a little corner, maybe with a, a, a curtain or something. So here, here's a safe place where you can store your baggage while you shop. Make them feel comfortable. The third thing that customers need from you is they need to feel important. And start by listening. I mean, really listening to them. And this is particularly true in an airport environment where we have many different travelers from many different parts of the world who are speaking many different languages. And sometimes it's hard to make out what they're saying. And I say that with some confidence because I, I, I understand you folks about 50% of the time. <laughs> I, I have to go back and say, I'm sorry, can you repeat? Can you more slowly, please? Make sure that, they, that, that your salespeople are are comfortable asking the customer to repeat themselves and listening. And then use verbal attends. Verbal attends are, how best to describe this? These are, they're not words really, they're more like noises. They're like, uh-huh, mm-hmm, yeah, gosh, really? Gee, wow, cool, far out. <laughs> oh, bitching, dude. No, you can only use those in California. Um, the, they're basically verbal signals that tell your customer that, yeah, you're listening, that you're paying attention, that you're engaged, and it's their turn to continue talking so that they have an opportunity to really qualify that customer, and especially if time is short. Because if the customer doesn't find the right thing that they're looking for the first time, they don't have time to browse around and look. And then ask lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of questions. In our book, Guerrilla Retailing, we include a list of 37 magic selling questions. And we call them the 37 mag uh, magic selling questions for two reasons. Uh, first of all, because there are 37 of them. And second, because they really are magical. And three of the most magical questions that you can ask is, what are you using now? What do you like most about it? And then, what do you like least about it? So if you can then provide a product that gives them the things that they like most, while fixing the things that then perhaps they like least, you're going to make that sale every single time. Very, very simple skill to teach. And never, never make them wrong or stupid. This is particularly true in boutiques that sell high-end uh, electronics or um, digital uh, products, uh, where there's a lot of tech talk. I tell you, I was in this one store. They were so rude, they wouldn't let me try anything on. I couldn't believe it. Anyway. And then the customer needs to feel understood. And the key to, to understanding this is that these ears believe most what this mouth says. They need to know across the barriers of geography and time zones and culture and language that they've been understood. And the way you train your people to signpost that is to match their criteria. Use the words that they use to describe the products that they're looking for, the things that they like, the things that they dislike. 